Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to another edition of Crimes of the Week International. Representatives from the Spanish Civil Guard say that they have dealt a major blow to one of Europe's largest criminal organizations this week after they arrested a key figure of the group, described as one of the continent's largest money launderers. According to reports, the arrest was part of a series of raids that took place on September 12th in Spain's Costa del Sol region, located in the south of the country, not far from the Strait of Gibraltar. There, authorities were able to capture Johnny Morrissey, a key member of the Kinahan Organized Crime Group, an Irish transnational drug trafficking and crime syndicate that is said to be one of the largest such groups in the world. Morrissey has reportedly worked for the cartel for many years, operating as an enforcer, arranging drug shipments, and most importantly, laundering money. He is said to be one of the seven key members of the organization, and at the time of his arrest, was allegedly laundering as much as $345,000 a day for them. According to investigators, Morrissey laundered money for the Kinahan cartel using an ancient money transfer system called Hawala. This informal method of moving money reportedly originated in the Middle East as far back as the 8th century AD and is a highly trust-based system involving a network of brokers who keep personal records of debts and amounts being transferred. The advantage of the system is that it allows for money to be transferred without physically being moved, and because brokers operate outside of traditional banking systems, no paper trail is left behind, in this case making criminal activity harder to track and investigate. Despite this, authorities say that they were eventually able to catch on to Morrissey's activities. This week's raids were reportedly the culmination of an 18-month-long operation led by the Civil Guard's Central Operative Unit, which is responsible for investigating and prosecuting the most serious forms of crime and organized crime in Spain. The Central Operative Unit was also assisted by authorities from Ireland, the UK, other European law enforcement, and the United States DEA. Over the duration of the investigation, it's estimated that Morrissey laundered roughly $196 million. One of the businesses he allegedly used as a front for this activity was his wife Nicola's Scotland-based vodka company called Nero Drinks. Nicola was one of three other people arrested in addition to her husband this week, though it's said that she has since been released on bail. Apparently, Morrissey had no idea what was coming, and at the time of his arrest, was shirtless and wearing only a pair of tropical pattern shorts. At the time of this recording, it's unclear if formal charges have been brought against Morrissey and his associates, though police say that further updates are expected in the coming days. Authorities in the Indian city of Mumbai say that a 20-year-old man is in police custody this week following his ham-fisted attempt to break into an ATM at his local bank. According to reports, the incident began sometime this week when 20-year-old Ritesh Bharti arrived at the Gowalia Tank branch of Union Bank in southern Mumbai, armed with some sort of cutting tool and an iron bar. He then walked up to an ATM that he had specifically chosen because there was no security guard station nearby and began to go to work on it, hoping that his efforts would secure him a large payday. Unfortunately for Ritesh, the YouTube tutorials that he had watched as his only preparation for the crime turned out not to be super helpful. While he succeeded in damaging or completely destroying several parts of the cash machine, he was never able to get it to spit out money like he had hoped. After an hour of fruitless vandalism, he gave up and left, apparently not realizing that he had been captured both by surveillance cameras at the bank and in the surrounding area. When the bank's assistant manager reported the crime to police, they used the footage to identify Ritesh and later placed him under arrest. During questioning, Ritesh apparently admitted to what he had done, but claimed his intentions were pure. He wasn't trying to steal money for himself. Instead, he wanted the cash so that he could splurge on his girlfriend. His bizarre excuse aside, 
police say that Ritesh currently remains in custody and has been booked under multiple sections of the Indian Penal Code. Representatives from England's Suffolk Police say that the deaths of a mother and daughter are being investigated as a double homicide this week after their lifeless bodies were found inside their home. The incident began just before 10 a.m. on September 8th when police were called to an address on Heath Estate in the village of Great Waldingfield with reports of concerns about the safety of those that live there. When officers arrived, they found a 44-year-old mother and her 12-year-old daughter dead inside the residence. A 46-year-old man was also found inside, suffering from serious injuries, and was subsequently airlifted to a hospital in Cambridge to receive treatment. He has now been arrested on suspicion of killing the two deceased victims. While officials have released few other details about the case at the time of this recording, Multiple reports have identified the two victims as 44-year-old Jalou and 12-year-old Louise Nash. It's said that Louise died from a stab wound to the stomach, while her mother's cause of death was, quote, pressure to the neck. The 46-year-old suspect's name has not been released, but reports state that he was known to the two victims. The only other piece of information available at the current time is that when authorities were called to the crime scene, they discovered that there was a gas leak at the property. This reportedly caused police to evacuate surrounding homes. However, this was rectified and residents were later allowed to return. At the time of this recording, the situation is still developing. Authorities in the Australian state of Queensland say that a 23-year-old man is dead this week after he was beaten and stabbed during a brazen daylight ambush that police suspect is related to outlaw motorcycle gang activity. According to reports, the incident took place sometime on September 12th when 23-year-old Levi Johnson was driving into the parking lot of a local gym in the Brisbane suburb of Mansfield. All of a sudden, he was allegedly cut off and rammed by two vehicles, later identified as a black Audi and a white Nissan Patrol. Once Levi was trapped, a group of four men got out of the two vehicles and began to smash his windows with a crowbar to get to him. Some reports state that the 23-year-old managed to initially flee from the car before being surrounded by the men, while others state that he was dragged from the vehicle. Regardless, once cornered, he was beaten and stabbed several times by his attackers before all of them fled the scene either on foot or in one of the two vehicles. Emergency responders were soon called to the scene and attempted to save Levi's life. However, they were unsuccessful and he was pronounced dead at the scene. While no official motive has been provided behind the chilling daylight murder, authorities now say that they believe Levi and his attackers had links to outlaw motorcycle gangs. Two of the four alleged assailants have now been arrested identified as Stuart Galloway and Luke Thomas Moore, both of whom are said to be 34 years old. The men are each facing murder charges, and Galloway has also been charged with weapons offenses. At the time of this recording, police say that they are still searching for the two other men allegedly involved in the crime, who they have identified as 35-year-old Thomas Myler and 24-year-old Kyle Martin. Authorities are asking for members of the public to come forward with any information that they might have about the two men's whereabouts, but have cautioned that they should not be approached if seen, as they are believed to be armed and dangerous. Police are still searching for the Nissan Patrol involved in the crime as well. The situation is still developing. Representatives from South Korea's Seoul Metropolitan Police say that a 31-year-old man has been arrested for murder this week after he stabbed a female former colleague to death one day before he was due to be sentenced on charges of stalking her. According to reports, the incident took place on the evening of September 14th at Sindong Station on Line 2 of the Seoul Metropolitan Subway System. It began when a female employee of the station, identified only as a woman in her 20s, called for help via an emergency alarm in the ladies' bathroom. Employees and emergency workers ran to the woman's aid, 
discovering that she had been stabbed several times. Though she was rushed to a nearby hospital, sadly, she was pronounced dead two hours later. While this was happening, the woman's attacker, identified as a 31-year-old man with the last name of Joan, allegedly tried to flee the scene. However, he was apprehended by another group of subway employees, as well as multiple citizens who happened to be there at the time. Following his arrest, Joan allegedly told police that he had planned on committing the vicious attack for some time, and had acquired the weapon used in the stabbing in advance. Before carrying out the murder, he had lurked in the subway station where the victim was working for over an hour before following her into the bathroom. What makes the crime all the more chilling is that Jung was due to be sentenced on two charges the very next day for stalking the same victim. Apparently, the two had met while they were both employees of the Seoul Metro, but Jung's behavior had caused the woman to file two stalking complaints against him. John was also reportedly fired from his job after illegally filming women. At the time of this recording, John remains in police custody. Authorities say that they are currently in the process of filing murder charges against him. Authorities in the Thai province of Cha Chong Sao say that a 17-year-old peeping Tom got more than he bargained for this week when he tried to spy on a 28-year-old female restaurant employee and was mercilessly beaten by the victim. According to reports, the situation unfolded sometime on September 11th at an unidentified Japanese restaurant somewhere in the province. It began when one of the restaurant's employees, identified only by the pseudonym Miss A, made a trip to the bathroom. While there, to her horror, she saw a phone poking up over the top of the stall she was sitting in. Someone was trying to record her. As soon as she realized what was happening, Miss A flew into a rage and began chasing the 17-year-old perpetrator who ran through the restaurant and outside into the parking lot. The teenager tried to get onto a motorized scooter and escape, but was too slow. He was cornered. That's when Miss A began to unleash a fury of targeted punches and kicks. You see, what the 17-year-old didn't know was that Miss A was a black belt in Taekwondo. In fact, she was a local champion who had won more than a few medals for representing her local district. As Miss A showed the teenager some of her skills firsthand, he struggled helplessly, continuing to receive blow after blow. Though at one point he managed to knock Miss A to the ground, she parlayed the hit into a backwards roll and was almost immediately back on her feet, punching and kicking again. After getting in a few more good hits, she ran to get her colleagues to notify them about what was going on. Unbelievably, rather than taking this opportunity to flee the scene, the teenage suspect reportedly drove his scooter up to the front of the restaurant, prompting Miss A to run back out and give him a couple more shots to the face. As a crowd of employees gathered at the door, Miss A snatched the 17-year-old's phone, showed everyone proof that he had been recording her, and then deleted the clip. At the same time, police were called, who arrived at the scene shortly after. When interviewed, the teenager reportedly told officers that he had been drinking at the restaurant prior to the crime, and said that he did what he did because he was feeling, quote, drunk and reckless. Hiding his face, he then spoke to the media offering a public apology for the incident. While it's not clear what happened to the 17-year-old from here in terms of legal repercussions, it seems pretty clear that he learned his lesson one way or the other. Authorities in the South African province of Limpopo say that one of the country's 50 most wanted fugitives is back in custody this week after previously escaping two times. According to reports, Chris Sitole, also known as Leon Nakomo, was arrested by police on September 13th in the town of Musina. He was wanted in connection with at least seven rapes and three robberies, which took place between January of 2012 and February of 2021. Despite his lengthy history of offenses, authorities have previously struggled to hold Sitole to account for his crimes. He reportedly managed to escape custody twice after being captured, 
most recently in 2017. According to reports, Sitole's most infamous crime took place in May of 2012, when he and two male accomplices booby-trapped a highway with stones near the town of Brits. When a couple drove over the area and the tires of their vehicle were punctured, the three men attacked, restraining the male driver while they took turns violating his wife. In that instance, like many others, Satole managed to flee the scene before police could arrive. While authorities are celebrating Satole's capture this week, reports do not mention if any specific measures are being taken this time to prevent him from escaping once again. At the time of this recording, he remains in custody and is scheduled to make his next court appearance in October. Authorities in the Brazilian state of Sao Paulo say that a 55-year-old lottery winner's incredible luck took a horrific turn for the worse this week after he was the victim of a brutal murder. According to reports, the incident began on the morning of September 13th when 55-year-old Jonas Lucas Alves Diaz left his home in the municipality of Ortolandia and went for what was supposed to be a leisurely walk. However, Family members became concerned when Jonas didn't return, finally reporting him missing when repeated attempts to contact him were unsuccessful throughout the rest of the day. Following a search effort, Jonas was found the next day. He had been severely beaten and left on the side of Highway SP-348, close to the interchange with Highway 101. Though the 55-year-old was rushed to a local hospital, sadly, he later died of his wounds. His cause of death was listed as a traumatic brain injury. The tragic case has drawn extra attention in Brazil because only two years earlier, Jonas was making news for a completely different reason. In 2020, he won 47.1 million real in the Mega Sena, the country's biggest lottery. Just for reference, that works out to just under $9 million US. At the time of this recording, it appears that the investigation into Jonas's murder is still in its early stages. Authorities say that the culprits responsible attempted to get into the dead man's bank account several times and tried to take amounts upwards of 3 million real, or about $57,000. However, they were only successful in stealing about 20,000 real, or about $3,800, using an instant payment platform called PIX. Investigators say that they are still trying to identify those responsible and say that they are unsure whether Jonas was targeted specifically because his attackers knew about his lottery winnings. At the current time, the situation is still developing. Before we wrap up, we'd like to take a minute to thank our amazing supporters over on Patreon. As many of you are aware, our situation on YouTube always seems to be a bit uncertain but our patrons help to ensure that we can continue to make content like this long term without having to worry as much about what surprises might be thrown our way. Plus, patrons also get access to four additional stories per week for each of our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International videos. If you'd like to help support the channel directly, head over to patreon.com slash crimezone to join. You can also find that link in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching and take care.